How are you doing? Um, I'm a bit late to the party on this one. It seems like um, I'm probably one of the last guys who actually ordered this well in advance and uh, it's only just arrived a few days ago. Uh, well, so everyone else, especially the blood suckers on eBay who order like five or six, seem to get them on day one of release and uh, the poor people like me and you who just want one copy just for themselves because they're proper collectors have to wait ages. So in that respect, I'm going to go back to my old school sort of videos and let's just have a laugh with this one and a bit of fun because it is a great box set as well and um, I'm pretty chuffed and happy about it. Um, firstly, when I saw the box and I saw it on the uh, Arrow website, uh, I thought, that don't look like Pinhead to me. Um, that guy has got a really big nose. This is not Doug Bradley. Why has this guy got such a huge nose? Um, I mean, if you're into Concords and Beats, sure, but... Um, it doesn't go, so I wasn't too impressed with the uh, the front cover. I didn't think it was that good. It could look so much better. For starters, Pinhead's got, got a slightly bluish tone to him as well as this guy's proper cement. Basically, it was another guy. Someone's just drew a completely different guy. In retrospect, it's probably an earlier version of him before Doug Bradley was actually um, picked for the part. But um, there we go. This is the set. It's got a nice little... Um, sort of box shape if you like on the uh, on the side and it shows you what's inside it and on the back you just got the diamond when the um, the box was actually opened into that sort of spear in hellbound let's open it up um you got nothing really inside there to look at um but you got the box set itself uh, and what i did notice i do I've got it in one of my old videos. I haven't got it with me now. It's in my collection in the the other room, so I don't want to get it out. But I notice there's a gap in the top. And I've already got the Hellraiser 1 to 3 from Germany box set. Uh, this isn't it. Obviously, this is one just to show it. So if you actually have that, as well as everything you've got there, you can fit it inside, like so. Um, and it fits perfectly on the top. Look at that. And therefore, you can then put it on the top. There you go, everyone's a winner. How's that? How's that for cool, man? Obviously, fit it, it'll have to be back to the front, but wicked. How cool, man? Yeah! I come up with something new. How's that? I'm not all stupid. Um, now, now that comes with the uh, sets. Um, they're, they're a bit lame. Um, personally, I prefer the box set to have a little cushion on the top and you get a little bag of pins and you can fit them on the top. <laughs> um, but you open it up and there's nothing inside. You just get some art. On the original fronts for number one, number two, and three, Chatter will be in the mouth. Um, yeah. Not very attractive, is he? Um, right, Hellraiser 1 was a great movie. I've got it, here we go. Um, now, I know it's 2K restoration, and this film was made in the 80s, uh, and therefore, because of that, the quality. I don't think it's all that. It really isn't all that for the uh, the actual film itself. I think it could have been an awful lot better. Um, and it really, really wasn't. So it's a bit speckly. It's not perfect. Uh, I, I guess because the film's so old, I mean, that's what it's like. I mean, the, the, the Star Wars, the original trilogy, is not perfect. It's a bit speckly, especially the first one. And... Um, Hellraiser's the same. So restoration, I just, I, I, I still had the old VHS of, of Hellraiser now. I'll probably be stunned by how bad the quality is. Because I was stunned that this wasn't amazing. And, and if I saw that, I'd be like, Ugh! But this is a great, iconic film. I absolutely love this film. Um, the, the Cenobites are the judges. And really, the story is about Claire and Frank. It's only Uncle Frank. Uh, and they're really the bad guys. The Cenobites are the people that actually aren't in it, in retrospect, that much. Basically, they are in enough, but at the stage where you actually want to see more of them, and they're just not. Uh, now, I've, I've put the extras on. There's some great up-to-date interviews on this. Uh, especially by Sean Chapman who plays Frank he's excellent in the interviews in the uh, first two movies uh, it's good 20 minute sit by interviews ask questions Doug Bradley also does interviews in this it's got some old featurettes and stuff as well as your usual trailers and artwork and so forth uh, also some interesting stuff about the story and Clive Barker itself so the extras and the up to date stuff is really good that Arrow done they obviously got these chaps in and they uh, paid him and they done the uh, the interviews and uh, Sean Chapman was absolutely top class. The next one you get with it is um, the Clive Barker Legacy, which I haven't actually seen yet. I don't quite know 
everything that comes with it. I mean, it does say on the disc that um, it comes with all, all these different limit. It's a limited edition one, uh, and it's got stuff like the short films on it, books of beyond library, and so forth. So jibble jabble. It might be a load of shit, but it comes with it all the same. I mean, I'm buying it for the movies themselves in the restoration. I know I had it on the still book, but uh, it's not just that. You also get um. Now this uh, is a bit lame. You you get this thing with it. Uh, I don't even know what that is. I mean, what's, what is that? I mean, that, by the way, that's a really good um, poster. I really like that. That's cool. Is that a film? A really old film that's come out a long time ago. I mean, she needs to eat more. I mean, she's down to the bone. But um, and you got the big poster, which is of that horrible front cover. So I'm hardly going to put this back out. Uh, and then you got this little book thing, which. Um, uh, it's okay, but to be honest, I could draw these pictures myself. <laughs> no, no, they're, they're okay, they're okay. I mean, the early development pictures and so forth. So they're all right. Um, and, and then you've got these art cards that come with it as well. Um, you've got one on Pinhead, and this guy who kicks the Cenobite's ass in the um, second one. He's a real nasty bastard. I'm not too keen on his character, though, the way he turned out. Female Cenobite, basically the only one that doesn't really have a name no no she's not a female celibate she's in um, Hellraiser 3 Paula Marshall's character Frank who I didn't know when he's in this outfit he's not actually Frank it's a totally different actor I was fooled by that I really thought it was Frank it's just got Frank's voice in it and Butterball the um, the big fat one um, Chatterer's missing for some reason um, so you get that and then what you, you do get which is quite nice is the big big book um, underneath it you've got this little card oh, I'm in hell that was the um, the one that sent Ashley Lawrence's Claire character back to the uh, the Cenobites and into the world in the second movie now the second movie is really good the first one excellent the second one not bad it continues the story in the same vein which I really do like uh, oh there's a lovely cockroach mm -hmm. Um, and you get to see more of the world of the Cenobites. Again, the Cenobites are judges and they're not in it completely all the time. This time, it's more about Claire and the woman, the bloke she, she's luring into it and he gets changed. Uh, so more about Claire in the second one, more about Frank in the first one. And um, you can buy one of these little spinning flesh things for free somewhere. I'm sure you can. Look at that. Oh, look at these pieces of meat. It's disgusting. That's Frank all over the place. Um, but anyway, yeah, you get this big, nice art. This, this is big. This is um, a really big book. This has got a lot of stuff in it. Um, I'm sure one day you're on the train or something. You know, it's small enough. You've got plenty to read. You've got plenty to look at from all three movies inside. It goes through, it shows all pictures behind the scenes, it shows clips from the film. But it's got a lot of goodies, a lot of knickknacks, a lot of stuff in there. There's a few kebab jokes in there as well. <laughs> and so forth from the posters from the original film too. Uh, so that's nice. That's a nice addition that comes with it too. I do like that. Um, Hellraiser 3, however, the Hell on Earth was where the decline of the Hellraiser films start. And to be honest with horror films, you can't really do a lot of sequels with them being any good. It's not like comic book hero films and Star Wars and so forth where you can keep opening things up. You're fixed to a certain amount of ideas that you can make in a horror film. You can get away with it maybe with two horror films, but when you start going three and above, it starts to get really difficult. And it did for the Hellraiser films. The third one, very poor, I thought, it's, 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 if anything, it's a bit silly, the nightclub scene. It's just there just for gore and nothing more. Uh, and then they start going to straight to video films. I think after the fourth one, they're all straight to video films. Fourth one, I think it's in the future in space, it's just ridiculous. So your memories are best to just remember the first two, and if you just want to laugh and gore, the third one perhaps, maybe. But uh, really, number one is where it's all about. Um, it's a much better story. And really low budget. It doesn't look like low budget film. Uh, it's also a film that was made in the mid 80s. Doesn't look like a mid 80s film, apart from maybe the electrocution effects uh, of when the Cenobites disappear at the end and so forth. Because it's all puppeteers and makeup and effects. So from that respect, it looks pretty damn cool. 
So overall, uh, you got four discs of fun with an awful lot of extras if you don't even want to watch the films again. Uh, and if you're into box sets like I am, it's a lovely addition to your collection. Arrow are brilliant at doing stuff like this. My only regret is why they only make 5,000. They're blatantly going to sell more than that because they just open themselves up to people just selling them at a profit and that really, really disappoints me a lot. It's kind of, it's kind of gay. I don't like it. I'm not too impressed. It's, a, it's like a man with a little dick. It's not very funny. <laughs> really is it uh, so there you go thanks guys um, next stop will probably be the box set for the extended Lord of the Rings The Hobbit Rrr, Hobbits um, I'll uh, pop that one out and maybe probably you may say that's my last last video for the year I think I've kind of had enough I've kind of done a lot take a little break and then start again next year when some new stuff comes out or so forth anyway cheers guys see you later bye